Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Bella. I post every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. I also have a family channel. You can go check that out. You can also go check out my videos on EDS, CRPS, and POTS. You can also go check out my Instagram. And in today's video, I am going to be telling you guys a little story time. So let's get into the video. Hey guys, so today's video is going to be my trans transition from a 504 plan to an IEP. Now, you might be saying like, what the heck is she talking about? So basically, I have a few like notes right now to like explain what it is. Okay, so a 504 plan is to help a child with disabilities identified under law that has accommodations in school for academic success. So if a 504 plan is like a temporary disability plan. I've had a 504 since sixth grade. In sixth grade, I had a concussion. In seventh grade, I had my CRPS, which you can go check out those videos. Eighth grade, well, the pandemic happened and in April I got COVID. And then ninth was online and stuff like that. And 10th was last year, I got COVID again. And then 11th is this year, obviously. I've had a 504 plan for five years. Um, I, cause I've had so many. It's not really introduced. Episode, I'm gonna say episodes for what I have. Um, it's only gotten progressively worse as I've gotten older and got through these things. Which is fantastic. Um, but yeah, 504 plan is more temporary. Sometimes it's a year or two years or whatever the, uh, whatever the child needs. And I started getting an IEP. My mom wanted it. I did not want it at all. I'm gonna be completely honest. I did not want an IEP. Um, and she, we got it done like under law with the United States, like law and stuff, the legal document. We got it done in the end of ninth grade to set me up for 10th. So I've had an IEP. This is gonna be my second year without an IEP. And an IEP stands for an individual education program. Um, and an IEP is a legal document under the United States law for public school students who need special education. So. I did not want an IEP. They told me what I was gonna have and stuff like that. Okay. So basically back to the 504 plan. So I got accommodations like extra time on my tests or extra time on work or I can go to the nurse at any time. Like I had these accommodations that were meant for my EDS, my CRPS and my POTS, all of these things that were gonna help me and make my life easier. When my life was so difficult. And then with my, since I got worse and worse and worse in ninth grade. And I'm still getting worse. We got my IEP and it had everything in the 504 plan with, but because it's a legal document, my mom wanted it. So if we ever got in a situation, it wasn't like a temporary 504 plan. It was a legal document stating that I had an IEP. And like, if we were ever in that situation, we would have legal documents for it. So that's why she wanted it. And I, did, I wanted it because it still had my 504 accommodations plus some because we kept adding stuff throughout the years. So as I needed more stuff. More accommodations. So I was fine in that aspect, but I didn't want to do resource. So I have a resource period. It was in 10th grade last year's fourth grade and this year it's ninth period and it's every other day. And I did not want a resource because it was gonna give me work. Like you have to have tasks in the IEP and goals and I didn't need it per se academically learning. I needed it academically making up work if I missed something. Cause I would wake up in the mornings, especially in high school. Middle school wasn't as bad cause it wasn't as early, but I wake up, I would say 75%, not even, probably 90% of the time feeling like I'm dying. Like my head hurts, my stomach hurts. Like it's just the way I feel. Like I'm just getting worse. And the earlier it is in the day, like, that's when POTS is the worst, uh, especially abruptly waking up as the school year goes, like not getting this, not the hours of sleep, but the abrupt waking up 
makes my body like shocked. So, anyways, I did not want an IEP. I didn't want more work. I didn't want a teacher telling me that I need to do these tasks when I really just needed a teacher to help me if I had questions or I need another period to get my work done. Like I did not want, I did not want a resource at all. Now, I love resource now. Like it is so nice. And honestly, I hate to say this, like I was ashamed at first. Like I don't like asking for help at all, which is kind of a bad thing. I'm not the person that will say I'm fine though if I'm not. Like if I feel terrible and you ask me how I'm doing, I'm gonna be honest with you. But I don't like putting it on like a silver platter and like making excuses. It's just not me. I don't want to make an excuse. I don't want, you know what I mean? I think I'm making sense. I don't want to be babied at all. Like when people say, oh, like I feel so bad for you. Like, please don't feel bad for me. Like, <laughs> I don't want your pity. I really don't. I appreciate the support so much. Oh, you're so lucky you get to leave earlier, this or that, or oh, you're leaving early to go to the doctors. Like, oh, you're out of school. Like, you're so lucky. Like no please don't wish that for me like wish you were me it's not easy it's not fun like telling people unnecessary well it was necessary but telling people like that i have these issues and uh i just didn't like it i didn't like it i didn't like everyone knowing i didn't like my resource teacher last year was literally amazing i loved her so much like, and i had such a good group of girls last year and like for my first year with an iep and resource if you're gonna get the accommodations you need i literally say mom like i don't want this iep like please don't get it for me and it's so much easier like the nurse what will literally like my mom will call and be like she's coming in late she doesn't feel good and she'll take care of my attendance and the guidance counselors are awesome the psychologists are awesome the ap's the assistant principals like everyone is so like genuine to me and i really appreciate that everyone has their own situation everyone has something that like like my stuff is my stuff your stuff is your stuff like we all walk in different shoes and that's okay. That's what makes us different. That's what makes us special. That's what makes us um, not exactly the same because if we just had copy and pasted, this world would be boring. But don't feel bad for me because there are other people that have different situations that are honestly worse than mine. Like there's some people that are literally like, for example, have to walk like five miles to get water in the day. And if you are, for whatever reason, moving to that transition, like, it's okay, it's gonna be fine. Like, it's not, for some reason, I was like so scared for like no reason. I was like, I don't like need this. Like, it is fine, I can do it all by myself. Like, what is the point? Like, I was so like against it. And it was so unnecessary once I like did was there and like experience it, experiencing it and stuff like that. Like I was so like defensive about it and there was no reason to be like, it's gonna be okay. Like you're gonna build friendships and relationships with people that have other, they're not, I mean me, I have like a rare condition. Like nobody has the same thing as me, which is another thing that I found out was great about me having an IEP because if there is somebody in the future that has medical conditions that holds them back, that hurts their academics or like they can't be in it the school has experienced it like this is the first time they're experiencing something that's a medical condition physically i mean obviously there's kids with depression and anxiety and adhd and all stuff like that but there's not a kid like me so i think they kind of know how to handle the situation if it happened again which is also super awesome but yeah, if you're making that transition to 504 and IEP and, and IEP sounds so scary to you, it is okay. It is going to be fine. Like the people there are so nice. Like their understanding from their perspective, from their understanding from their struggles helps 
like you just build that bond which i think is super special like anyone any of the girls that i had last year like i would do anything for them if they came up to me and like needed something or whatever like i would really i would really do anything for them even my teacher last year she sadly moved down to the middle school which is like so sad because i thought i would like be able to see her in my last two years we'll see what happens i'm so sad like she's down so i still have communication with her i still talk to her and stuff like that but you're just gonna and even my teacher now like this is the second week of school it actually hasn't been a full week of school yet four day week the last two weeks and i have every other day and i don't go every day because one i don't have it every day and two i have gym she's also so nice and it's just so fun and like obviously like people have their tasks and they need to get stuff done during the period and i don't my technically my task is studying and like doing things that i need to catch up on which is super awesome because i was so like anxious about the fact that they were going to give me tasks like doing math problems for example or doing this or doing that or reading a something something extra work that's also why i was so against that first because i really thought they were going to be giving me more work and i'd be even more stressed out but that's not true they're all there to help everyone that is helping you with that transition if you're in that tr transition what that transition process or just being an IEP in general is amazing. Like there's such amazing people out there that are in those school systems and it's really great. I trusted God and trusted my mom to like get me an IEP. I'm thankful for them because it makes my life so much easier. And like I said before, I was so like, I don't need help. I can do it all by myself. And like, it's not the case sometimes and it's okay to ask for help it's okay to ask for help i have been de defensive about asking for help a lot and i'm really trying to work on it to like let people help me because i am a very i think it's the italian in me like i can do it all by myself it takes a village to raise a family it takes people and connections and yeah like it's okay to ask for help. Please ask for help because it is going to be so much better. Even if it's not with an IEP, even if it's like you're super anxious and you're hiding it or you're depressed and you're hiding it, don't hide it. Let people help you. I know it's hard. I know it is. I have been through it. Like I know it's hard to ask for help. You'll get the help you need. You'll be, become a better person. You'll be, become a better, better version of yourself. And yeah, that's my story of my transition from 504 to IUP. Sixth grade to now, it has been my 504 plan and legally documented has been my IEP from 10th grade. And this is my second year with an IEP. It's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay. It was a long journey, a lot of injuries, a lot of problems, still have problems. And it's okay, it's okay. We're all in this together, you got it, you got it. I think that's all I wanted to say. Um, and like, it just makes, the all the accommodations I have in my IEP makes my life so much easier, but it is okay. Ask for help, please ask for help. Whatever change, there's always change and it's gonna be okay. It'll put you to the test, but it's gonna be okay. You'll be stronger for it. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.